probably one of the greatest players of slow movements that I have ever heard. And it's Arthur Schnabel, and it's the slow movement to the Sonata Opus 22, dedicated to Count von Braun. This was not an Englishman, but a Russian. Strange name for a Russian. And it's spelled B-R-O-W-N-E, as if it were English, as a yeah. matter of fact. Well, I know that French was very fashionable in Russia at that time, but I don't know about English. Well, let's hear Schnabel in the middle movement. And it's marked Adagio con molta espressione, with much expression.
Mr. Edwards, I would call that clinging to the pianoforte. No. That is playing of such intense and yet balanced expression that I don't think anybody can compete with it. What is it that makes it so, uh, work so well? Is it the fact that his uh, beat is exactly right and that it's constant throughout his tempo? The magic of something which I have no idea. It's, it's a man so thoughtful, so cerebral, yet so passionate. I have talked to many pianists, some of great reputation, and all they have to do is hear Schnabel play a slow movement for complete intimidation to set in. And then there's, there's no way they'll touch the sonata. Well, you it's say he's the master of the slow movement. Yes. Um, I gather that... Sometimes he's sloppy in outer movements, you know. That uh, on, in the faster tempo, he's not uh, that good, is it? Oh, he's wonderful. Uh, he's, he's sublime. Remember, this man played... I think he died in 1951 or so, but this man played the first all Beethoven cycles, and he played seven concerts of these Beethoven sonatas mm -hmm. uh, over and over again in his career. Um, first, I think, in London, then in America, and it continued these Beethoven cycles. And he played all the sets of variations, which sh we should hear as well, and the five concertos. And there were days he played them probably very well. There were times he uh, he didn't like to practice in the uh, nitpicking manner of perfection. He was a musician, and he was an inspiring teacher. All who studied with him came back with uh, the gleam of inspiration and dedication to the art of music, not so much to the individual's ego. Uh, that that um, type of mentality which makes you a servant to the art. Mm -hmm. and uh, Schnabel had it and uh, he was full of humor and he saw the humor in Beethoven there are so many areas of Beethoven which only until we hear them over and over do we find this man is having a wonderful joke structural or whatever just in so mm -hmm. many ways of course uh, the thing that I forget and of course I'm reminded of it now he recorded these what in the 1930s when they were 78s and there they cost no a fortune here. then we can get this on seraphim for nothing almost mm -hmm. no that's quite true and uh... well it was underwritten by the beethoven society over in england yeah, was that, that right? they just paid him to do it as best as he could was that what it was or was i guess so edition? uh... i don't know sh i don't know how schnabel felt about these performances i think that he probably thought they were pretty good mm -hmm. but uh... just imagine the man who would say once in my career have has have i finally played opus ninety the way i wanted the final movement came off Mm -hmm. One time. I mean, he was playing everywhere. It was, mm -hmm. you know, w probably the most respected pianist in the world in the musicianly sense. Mm -hmm. Let's have another slow movement by a wonderful artist, Alfred Brendel, who was so successful in the opening movement yesterday.
That was Alfred Brendel playing the second movement of Beethoven's Opus 22 piano sonata. And we'll present now David Dubois with uh, his impression of that. Oh, well, it was nothing like Schnabel's, of course. No, I quite agree, and yet I can't say why, because it's the, the tempo seemed to be uh, just a bit faster, and yet uh, it was very solid throughout. There was something... Very else. nice, of course. No, no, okay. Let's hear uh, Wilhelm Kempf's performance of the slow movement of Beethoven's 12, 11th piano sonata.
Oh, that was Wilhelm Kempf. Doing a beautiful job, of course. But the schnabel is in my ears, and I think that's the performance. Let's move on to the minuet, and no... Kempf in the minuet movement from the Sonata number 11, opus 22 in B-flat. This little minuet has a lot of swing. It must not be taken too fast. Kempf's playing was okay. Let's have Maria Grinberg. Thank you. 
for my personal taste, Grinberg played this much... What's the word? Better? Oh. No, no, no. Anyway, when Beethoven and the trio goes into G minor instead of the B flat of the minuet, there's a sturdier approach. Also, the phrasing. Kempf had this staccato ending on each of the uh, phrasings, which um, in the little motives were anticipated by 16th notes, then a quarter note to an eighth note. And the eighth note just bounced off and it disturbed me. Uh, let's have. Richter's performance of this piece. Beautiful, Mr. Richter. Beautiful. Uh, I have how, a question how about How courtly that. that was. The minuet was so contrasted with the uh, section in G minor. Beautiful. Yes. The question I have is that, uh, obviously, I've had some trouble finding the beginnings of movements today, and this is because uh, Richter, in particular, uh, here went from one movement into the other with virtually no pause, and I'm sort of curious what... Uh, what the performing practice really is. Is there a pause between movements? Does the, the performer have a time uh, to catch his breath, as it were? Or did the composer really It's a personal it? thing. Um, How does a, the you composer You can't just indicate? stop instant. Sometimes there's a hold mark, or what they call a fermata. Uh, that's, that often happens. There has to be some pause. Now, the length of it is up to the interpreter. He'll feel ready to go when he's ready. 
I don't think it should be more than 10 minutes. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Let's have Richter again in the last movement.
were your words at the final chords? I said, lovely, quite lovely. Lovely, quite lovely, really so. That was Sviatoslav Richter in the finale, the last movement of the B-flat sonata. And now another performance. Oh, and the technical polish of that uh, mm -hmm. performance as well. Mm. Let's hear Bachhaus.
think we both agree. It's very good. Quite w good. A very academic performance without the suavity of Richter, and that was Wilhelm Bachhaus in the B-flat sonata, the 11th of the 32 sonatas of Beethoven. Tovey wrote of this work, it would be a healthy early ambition of the young player to achieve a straightforward performance of this sonata that brought out its beauty by sheer accuracy, together with a due pleasure in the production of good piano tone. The pride of fashion has dictated a persistent undervaluing of this work, as if Beethoven had written himself down by achieving perfection without any show of force or humor. When this despising of normal beauty penetrates into the schoolroom, it hinders the progress of young people who may develop into something mo much more valuable than the transmitters of mere fashion. Only a very great composer could have written this sonata, and a good performance of it promises a capacity for presenting the greater things that follow it. And tomorrow we'll hear two performances, complete performances, of this sonata, Opus 22. You've been listening to a musical offering with WNCN's Music and Parameter.